morning, Joe Deary, Powerful Improvements, Putnam, Connecticut. Out here in Thompson, Connecticut today to clean one of the dirtiest properties I've had in a long time. We got this panel fencing that goes all the way around the property, all the way down there to the end. I think this is a six or an eight unit building. If I'm counting dormers here, we got six dormers. So I'm gonna guess it's maybe six apartments. Uh, we'll count. Uh, power on the other side. We get the rig all set up on the corner over here. This is an area that's being rehabbed. This is old mill row housing and you can see this one is in extreme disrepair. But anyway, we're set up on the corner. Hoses pulled all the way down around to the other side. I'm starting on the fence with the X6 and I've got my proportioner set at 3% and I'm going to hit this nice and hot and let it hang out for a while. Then I've got pressure washing pulled all the way around the front and then back this way again, looped out in the driveway. So I can go inside the back here. Okay. And this house is extremely dirty. So I'll show you my setup on that when we get there. The first thing we're gonna do is hit this fence with some 3% and let it hang out. So when you come into a job like this, you wanna to try to evaluate what are your resources? I have plenty of water here. They have city water, so I don't need to worry about that. I have plenty of chemical on the truck, which is good because I really want to melt this. It's going to come right off because it's wet. It rained like crazy here yesterday. So this is going to come off pretty easily. I'm still going to nuke it though. 3% going to let it hang out and try to save as much time as possible. You need to evaluate, again, your resources. What do you have? Do you have time? Do you have money? Do you have chemical? Do you have water? And which way can you get through the process the easiest? Sometimes, when you don't have water, hit things a little hotter, and you don't need to rinse as much, you don't need to soap a second time, and your life can be easier. If you don't have any chemical, you want to use, you know, a weaker sauce and do more rinsing. And if you have the money to spend on the chemicals, that's another factor. But then ultimately time is money. So the quicker you can do it efficiently, the more of it you can do. Noteworthy is that I am running soap. I don't usually run any soap. I'm running soap on this though with the idea that maybe, I don't know if you can see it on the white, but maybe my soap my, or my SH will hang out there a little bit longer with a little bit of cling. Like I say, we're going to do this process down the entire length of this. I'd say we got at least 100 or more feet of fence here. This is about a 20 foot spot. If each of those are 8, 16, 25 feet on each end, so there's 50. Well, probably 150, maybe 200 feet of this panel fence. So again, we don't want to be here all day working on this. Because we still get that big old house to wash over there. Which is also filthy. Alright, so I just used up all of my soap there was about 10 gallons of soap in there just now i had my valve on the soap opened up about halfway i had this set on about five with water wide open so i'm thinking i got two and a half or three percent out of this uh maybe i used about 75 80 gallons of water so say maybe 100 gallons or so to treat this fence i started in the corner that way came all the way around here to the other side then went back all the way down again. So it's been double soaked. And this is the worst area of it that I keep taking pictures of and filming. And you can see that we've 
just melted it. And it's gonna come right off. All right, so X6 is all wrapped up and put away so it's out of my work area. We're downstreaming now the rest of the project. So I've got my hoses pulled up the driveway there, brought back in, flaked out, because I'm going through a hole in the fence over here to do the whole back. So while I'm in there, I'm gonna downstream the inside of the fence, downstream the whole house, rinse all in there. When I come back out, I'm, that's when I'm gonna give this fence the final rinse and wash the other end. And then I'll only have the front to do, which will bring my hoses back up the driveway again. And then I'll be able to roll it back up to the truck fairly easily. The thing of note today is that I'm using the 1.8 injector. That's a brand new or nearly new GP injector with the check valve from Cody at Southeast Softwash. And this thing absolutely rips. I've flow tested this thing at seven to one. So I'm expecting to be putting up about you know, one and a half or so percent here uh, on the back here. So we're gonna see, we should get a good result on the fence and we're gonna get a fantastic instant result on the house. Let's go give it a try. We've got brimming full gas tanks this morning and all the machines, good to go. Bunch of guys ask me about electrical. I don't uh, bag or tape a lot of things, but this, Look at this. Uh, and then there were these 100 amp breakers here. You can see they're on doors. There's 100 amp breakers in there. These covers aren't that great. Some of them were exposed completely. So I covered them with zip tape. That's what I have on the truck. I like to use the zip tape. It sticks really well. And then I always leave it open on the bottom because my feeling is that if any fluid were to get in there, at least it has a place to exit and won't necessarily stay in there. Some of these are okay. Tape that one. I'm gonna put a trash bag over this completely, tie it up in the back here. And then I am not washing this area at all. I may spray a little bit up on the whites there to try to clean that up, but I am not washing this siding in here at all. I'll start here again and go that way, but I'm staying completely away from this. Is it? quite sketchy right. that trash bag fit over that nice and tight and again i'm going to stay away from it uh, you can see how dirty we are in here i had one other outlet here that i didn't like the looks of that i put a shingle over real tight on the sides open on the bottom over the little fence show you how dirty this area is water source at least nice and here's the inside of the fence nearly equally as bad we got a lot of real clean bleed through though. You see where it's been drooling. Again, this is gonna be a little weaker than what we used on the other side, but still should be effective. We're gonna let it hang out as long as we can. I got the inside complete fence, everything. I oh, can't see it. You gotta take my word for it. It's beautiful in there. Take my word for it. All done in there. It took me about an hour and a half in there. So consequently, I'm out here to rinse the fence now with about an hour and a half dwell on this stuff. And it's coming right off. This has been my method.
I decided to come in here and get some video. This place came out beautiful. How clean. That check valve injector worked like lightning back here. The fence, which was so nasty on this side, also came back beautiful. Roughly one and a half percent, I'm guessing. All right, so I shut down, took a break, took a few photos that I needed for my before and afters, switched back to the 2.1 injector. I don't need to be running this hot one anymore to do the front and the electrical end over here where it's sunny, there's hardly anything. So I got my hose flaked out over here now, wash this end, wash the front and I'll be done. I've been here to, let's see, what time is it? It is 11.30, I've been here since nine. So I'm two and a half hours in already. I priced it accordingly, so I'm good. I don't expect I'll be here much more than maybe another 45 minutes now. Pretty good sized building though. But the plan is to soap this, soap it all out, switch to rinse, come back to the truck, reel it up. Now the front of this building cleaned up quick. 2.1 injector on those gutters and they look brand new out here in the sunshine. I went all the way down, came all the way back with a quick second hit on everything. Switched over to rinse and we're on our way back down into the sun now. Rinsing with a fan as much as possible. I find I get the, le the least amount of weepers when I'm using a fan. I find I get more weepers when I'm using the shooter tip to rinse. You're force forcefully, obviously forcefully putting water you know, in a more concentrated area. I try to fan and cascade as much as possible. All right, next property. Out here in beautiful Woodstock, Connecticut. Look at this big old colonial wood siding painted. We got one gutter here in the back and then one on the other side, which is buried under the trees. It's going to be difficult to get to. I think I can walk this roof right here, but not the other side. We're going to go up and take a look real quick. I got gutter extension tool with me. And my trusty tarp, which I'm going to lay out on this deck. I plan to just be dropping some debris down here. And we're going to take a look. It rained torrentially yesterday, so I'm expecting whatever's up in there to be very wet. So I don't think I want to blow it out and make a big mess back here. Yeah, it's kind of what I expected. The drain is actually clear. We got this one big growth of boogie <clears throat> and some more organics down the way there. This roof is walkable, so I may just go on here, scoop my butt and scoop it and throw it down onto my tarp. Probably be the easiest thing to do. That's some muckety muck muck. All right, we got some actual lawn growing up in here. Homeowner's out here. He was good enough to, oh my God, to uh, cut out some of the tree here while I'm here so I can actually get to this area. Well, I'm gonna need two hands for a minute, hold on. All right, here it comes, look at this bad boy. Oh, look what I caught. Oh my goodness, she's beautiful. Catch and release. This gutter came out like brand new, baby, brand new. Give her a nice little rinse, get the mud down. Prove to the client that the downspout is flowing correctly. Piece of tape. I chose to use the X6 because it's easy to pull it off the truck. Fired up the 5.5 for extra flow. And I'm just going to give this a nice flood in that valley over there. So everything pushes from that corner. 
All the muck and debris will push right out of that corner down my downspout. Oh yeah, there it goes. Beautiful. Be beautiful. Hey, we are out here in beautiful Trenton, Ohio, in the country, working on a cape. We've been out here one time before, a few years ago, when we first started. Got a beautiful babbling brook, goes under the road. Nice little property. All staged, we're doing gutter cleaning here and house washing. I got my ladder set up, my leaf blower set up. I got 250 feet of hose flaked around the back of the house, and we're good to go. First is gutter cleaning, make some mess, blow some debris around come on down and wash tanks are filling up let's go check it out look at this building back here this is what I need two bays with a little space on the side we got to build something like that all right, we are wrapped all the way around the house. We'll wash our way back to the field in front, reel it right up nice and easy. This house is not very dirty. I haven't been here. I have washed this house before, but it's been two years anyway. I'm surprised that it's not dirtier than it is. Obviously, I did a good job all that time ago, but... I've been washing houses out here every year. Two years, usually they're pretty dirty, and this thing is not. So it'll be a quick, easy house wash. 2.1 injector. I got 250 pulled all the way around. blazing sun you can see the steam coming off of that bulkhead cooking in the sun Here's your one dirty side, and it's just mildew, not even really any green algae. Well, that's good. 